Hi everybody, Francine here at Devoted Danes. I'm <clears throat> visiting the puppies today, so I thought I'd bring my camera and show you guys how they're doing. So they're currently two weeks old today. They started uh, the birthdays on Friday, so they're two weeks. And Mama's doing great, and so are the babies. <laughs> Cleaning this little lady up. Isn't she magnificent? Oh my God, she said, I'm willing to eat, I'm willing to eat. They've really gotten big since I've seen them. Uh, look at this little lady. She's so cute. Mama's, oh, she's really spotted on her tail. Look at this little darling. Trying to, oh, he's got little peepers. I think. Or that, or, no, it's spotted, sorry. <laughs> sorry, buddy. He is pretty. That's the uh, fawn Merrill. Look at him truck around. And then you got this little delight. Isn't that the cutest little face? Oh my goodness. Oh, I love puppies. Here. Oh, you were relaxing, huh? And uh, I don't. This is the boy. Apparently, the collars didn't last too much. But he's the only boy Harlequin. Little girl Harlequin. She's cute. She's got a lot of specks on her little face. Here's the rest of the gang. All crammed in. Chow time. The little black one's really gotten big since I've seen their... I think that's her. It could be a boy. It's hard for me to tell. But get your mummies over here, little, little love. So... <clears throat> they cute. She's got to clean them up, you know. She's doing really good, Lexi is. Look at this baby. Oh, goodness. Life is tough when you're this cute. I love all the spots on the face. Little girl. they really gotten good size for a, for a litter of 13. They're good sized. Mm. So it's hard to show everybody because they're kind of crammed in and they've gotten bigger so they've outgrown their mummy. We saw her. Oh, she... oh this is a little Meryl. Meryl boy. Isn't he cute? He's got like some little split face on him. They're all like trying to get something to eat. This one's going right to town. It is a, this is the boy. Look how big he is. He's beautiful. The fawn girl. The little fawniquin. I think she's currently the littlest. But usually in a litter this size you're going to get a runt or smaller ones. It just means they're smaller, that's all. This one's hunting and it's right in front of her. She's savage. But <laughs> there's another one under here. I'm trying to show them all. Oh, he said, I was eating, lady. Oh, what a sweetie. Aren't you cute? Little girl. she got the nice, cute little black leg. The little fawn mantle. Oh, fawn boy's down here eating his heart out. <laughs> yes, every time I come in, she wags her tail. She's so sweet. They stay warm by clumping together. It's kind of how it's actually nice. Singletons, you have to worry about them, you know, getting warm enough. And <clears throat> But usually if you have a litter, they keep each other warm. Plus they stay on mom. That's pretty warm. Look at this little face. Mm. It looks like they're all doing pretty good with their weight. Kayla keeps track of their weight on week one and two, so everybody's gaining. Our Fonaquin's still the littlest, but she's still gaining too. Look at those lips. <laughs> That's the little phonic, phonic Harlequin boy licking his chops. This is little lady. No sweetness. She cute. She's so cute. 
just chilling. But everybody's doing great. Look at this little body. <laughs> Sister's on his head. <laughs> little boy. Lexi's such a good mom. She's been eating a lot of... Um, Kayla's been feeding her like five times a day. Because, <clears throat> you know, feeding a pack this size, you're always hungry. Plus, Kayla is supplementing these little turkeys um, with uh, formula. So the formula we use is basically a goat, goat's milk based, but it has some other stuff that we add to it. So just to try to give them some more calories and nutrition. But... <sighs> They're doing good. I mean, they're bigger than two hands. Look at you. This is the one that reminds me of Fiona. <laughs> you little sweet thing. Somebody's tired. So they're doing good. So this is week two. Their little eyes should be opening soon. It's usually right around hovering around. Uh, two weeks that they open <coughs> so should be good so so probably Kayla's next if she after this week if she does a live they'll probably they'll have their little eyes will be open they already be bopping around Lexi is such a great mom she's a great she's a great girl aren't you Lex yes look at that little face and then this is who's outside the gate. Daddy Dearest, Hurl. Yeah, those are your babes, Hurl. He's been such a little sweet thing since I came over. What's my attention? at Devoted Danes. So, busy, busy week last week. Um, a lot going on as usual, just like everybody else. But um, we've had a little bit of change of plans. Um, if anybody looks at our website, it's at www.devoteddanes.webs.com. We have our upcoming breedings on there. How I anticipate and how I have planned out according to the heats of my girls. So with that being said, um, you know, I had a paired up. Um, I had Grizzly um, paired up with Nala later this year. Uh, and Cheska was with um, Hurley. And she was due to go into heat in October. Well, the plans have changed because Nala decided to go into heat now. And Grizzly's not quite old enough um, to be bred. So, or to use to stud. Um, when I say that is we like to wait till our males are about a year old. You know, and Grizzly's a little bit shy of that. Um, not that he can't perform. Uh, male puppies at six months old can produce, so that's not the problem. Though, um, this would be his first time, so, but just to give you a little bit of an explanation on how that works. Um, so he's a little bit young, and um, so we kind of mix things around. So today, I went over and got Hurley, and we're going to use Hurley with Nala. Um, they have been bred before. Um, their litter, uh, her first litter that she had was with Diesel. So this would be her second litter. Um, and, um, we're going to give Hurley a whirl, um, just cause he's, you know, he's appropriate age. He's a proven stud, um, and so on. But, so I have Hurley here with me and I let them, you know, see what was going on because I really haven't put out progesterone tested Nala yet but according to like we track them day one day two according to what like, we normally breed them on she's getting ready or pretty close to it so I 
got everything done everybody's got fed and everything and um i let her leave with her just to see if um she was ready um males are really good indicators if the female's ready or not uh frank used to tell me the day before the girls would even come into heat he could tell so hurley's all about it he's he's a go for him so he's trying she's a little bit resistant so i think she might be a little bit early so what i've done is pulled blood which is fun for an experienced person by themselves to pull blood i have done it but it <clears throat> Um, was in like the beginning of this year so this is the first um first time in months that i've done it so nala was patient with me um, and if you can hear um farley knows she's in heat too so that's you know uh it stresses out the males that's why i think if you're not you know, sometimes things happen and you decide not to breed certain males or females. You should have them spayed because it is a lot on the males for the girls to go in heat or for the males to be intact. So, um, Farley's intact. He's also her father. So, um, he doesn't realize, but, um, you know, it is what it is. So, I got the blood. Let's do the test and see what Miss Nala's numbers are at. So, I got my pedestrian sheet machine out of archives since I haven't used it and since the beginning of this year. I took blood from Miss Nal. She wasn't happy, but we got it done. She's my sweet girl. So, next thing I want to do... I got this all all set up as my little like um, pedestrian kit little thing so I can slide it around the room plug it in cover it when I'm not using it and such so with this machine you always have to have this in and it um, <clears throat> I can't talk it programs the chip according to the box of tests so where did I put that box of tests Oh, good question, Francine. Oh, sorry, guys. I put them right here. <laughs> yep. So, let's see. So, what I'm going to do is put her blood in here. In case you guys, I mean, some of you guys have seen this before, but I'll show you again just because I'm, I'm running the test. So, this is the display, how it looks. And this machine actually... Clear that's coming in. Let's see. This machine actually does uh that's I'm trying to get it to focus. Sometimes it doesn't want to anyway. If you can't see it's dog, cat, horse, cow, or even poultry. Who would have thought people did poultry, but they guess they do. So I'm just gonna hit dogs over here. So it automatically knows I'm doing a dog. I'm doing serum, which is what I'm going to get from her blood. Um, I can go in and put her name, testing item, results. It'll store it in the machine. But I just kind of print it out and I clip it on my board. I have some from um, <clears throat> last time. So let's get to it. This first tray is a, a table because my table's not that big. So I'm just gonna, well I got, I should have set up my tripod, but I didn't. You just take the needle off the top and the blood goes in the serum, in that little container. And that little container is gonna go in your mixer. So but I have my centrifuge just set up in the bathroom because like I said, this is an old house and um, we don't have a lot of good three prong outlets. So I, Put the blood in there and this will spin it so just the serum is at top if you're only doing one you want to have a counterweight i just use water so and you want to turn it on so this will spin it and you don't have to keep it in very long it's just a um a few minute uh you know a minute or so so once i have the serum in the pipette i will put um, it's a measured amount, so you just go until the click, you know, you just click it, and then 
um, you will take this and you will put it in the machine for the test. So I just had completed the test and um, once you're done with these, you just toss them out. All the records are saved on the machine. So, um, so the test goes in here, but I had already did the test. The test came back and this is what the results were. So what I do is I just kind of um, date it and then I go over the results. Um, so what was happening is I put him out with her and he, like I said, he was acting like she was what I call prime, like prime time, prime time, reminds me of uh, Freddy Krueger, um, prime time for breeding. So sometimes, I mean, he's not around her all the time. I just brought him today and he knows, hey, this girl's in heat. So um, we're normally, if he's around her all the time, sorry, I'm trying to do too much at once. Normally if he's around her all the time, he will like, you'll see them smelling and um, that kind of gives them an indication of where they are for breeding. That sounds weird, but it's kind of how it works. Um, so um, I'm glad I was able to take Nala's um, get her blood and and um, I'll post a picture. The lighting's awful because it's now um, gets dark so soon. But I'll post a charge chart of what it looks like. So what this does is it prints out um, her records and it will give you a number, a production number. And then it also gives you another number. So the other number is basically a generic number like if they use this, like this um, test is calibrated and this is the number they use, but they kind of give like a universal number, I guess you could say. So you could say, oh, these are her numbers she had and you could kind of, you know, correspond or, or um, look it up on different charts. But I just go by the chart that I have with this machine. So, um, Okay, so my machine came with its own like um, charts to um, kind of look at them and know what best results are for insemination and when to do it. So it showed up that Nala was at, first let me explain how um, the numbers work. So when you take a blood test, you do the serum, you spin it, you put it in this little test a couple drops in this test and then you slide it in your machine. The machine will start giving you numbers. Between a two and five is um, the surge. The surge of the progesterone will begin to rise. So that's like kind of like the basic start of the heat cycle. So when she gets between a six and a 10, that's when it's estimated that a female ovulates. So if I took a test and she was a seven, she's ovulated or she's in the process of it. So, and then what you want to do is test her again because, okay, we know she ovulated. We want to make sure her numbers are still going up because once she ovulates, um, it takes a few days for her eggs to drop and ripen. So when she gets to a six to 10 means she ovulates, but when she gets to like a seven to 15, those are perfect numbers for first breeding. Um, and then it really, and what you'll, what you'll get by the ovulation, like I'm gonna start um, breeding once I realize she's at the six to 10 cause she's ovulating. Um, but by testing after that, you're just making sure that she's going up. You want her numbers to go up. You don't want to linger or sometimes a female will linger around the same numbers. So you just want to be sure your girl is ovulating and her numbers are going up. So they recommend breeding from 11 to 15, the first breeding. So my experience is once they start ovulating to breed because it takes time for the semen to get up there. And if you don't know, semen can live from five I know for a fact, <laughs> at least five days in there. Um, I've had one that was bred and I set a due date to that one breeding. She had the puppy five days later. So 
that semen stuck around in there so it can be five to seven days that the semen could live in a female and what it does is it's just hovering in there the eggs drop and it's there to inseminate so that's why i believe once she starts getting to six to ten i'm gonna start breeding if she's willing um she will let me know like or let hurley know like she's ready um so that would be um 11 to 15 they say for the first breeding and then the second breeding to wait and, and the numbers just go up 15 to 25 so a lot of times they'll say um breed twice for um best results and i always say skip a day in between because we already know the semen can live you know five to seven days so you don't need to breed back to back to back um so that that's why a lot of people will say skip a day um yeah so once she um so what they're saying is once she naturally or what they say is once they naturally ovulate then you can breed uh three two to three days after they ovulate to do a natural tie but like i said if the semen's in there and it's going to stay viable i almost rather start breeding once i know she ovulates because i mean it does take time for it to get up there the numbers do spike fast i have this is um see, my nose is itchy this is a third girl i've tracked and i know from experience that once they can get like a 15 they can go to a 30 and then that's pretty much over unless you're going to do a surgical implant um there is a, a, a different ways to um to um artificial and surgical is one of them i'm not going to get into all those details because it's probably confusing enough with all these numbers it took me a little bit to learn like i did a lot of research before i bought my machine um and they're very expensive but i mean just knowing that okay <coughs> Excuse me like Hurley's saying it's a go and she's not being cooperative so it's like oh well but because she's not cooperative because oh I didn't tell you what her number was here I am going off and off I'm good like that um, so her number is a 3.27 so she is just in the beginning stage of the estimated um, LH surge progesterone starts to rise in that within those numbers so she's just on that so once she gets to a six that's when she's going to ovulate so you can't always go by okay um a lot of people track by their menstrual once they start seeing um blood they'll say oh today's day one well i this is day 11 for nala i've seen a since her first spot spotting of her menstrual cycle starting it's been 11 days i used to breed on day 11 and 12 and i always had no problems that we had puppies but look nala's on day 11 and she hasn't even ovulated yet um so what can happen and has happened to me so you live and you learn is if you do happen to get a male that will tie like hurley would tie if she was gonna let him she didn't though is you will end up maybe with a singleton so what the plan is either to do another test tomorrow on Nala or skip a day and then do a test. Um, sometimes the res the numbers can go up fast or sometimes they'll linger around a little bit more. I find that when they do start to shoot up, they go fast. So um, we'll see how they are tomorrow and um, go from there. But Hurley's at, um, at my house right now. He He's just the daddy of the puppies that Lexi had um so he'll be here with us for as long as it takes for Nala to ovulate and hopefully we have success with a beautiful litter of puppies from these guys so um that's the update um we did have to do a little bit of maneuvering and we should be using Grizzly later on um when he's a little bit older um we so um stay tuned for that and we will see. Thanks. Is that Hurley Nala? Is he coming into play? Yes, he's coming in to see you. <laughs> oh, she's a 
there he is. So as you can see, she's not quite submissive yet, but she's getting there. Huh, no.